There's one presidential candidate that's taking a playbook straight out of Silicon Valley. When you think of politics, when they're doing the, all of their fundraising, it's usually them meeting with a bunch of like big wig, big wig rich people, collecting mm -hmm. some cash. No one knows anything about it. Super untransparent. But there's someone that's trying to flip upside down and bring a little innovation to the space. So let me break it down. So Vivek Ramaswamy, which I probably butchered his last name pretty bad. He's a Republican candidate, primary candidate. And he came from the entrepreneur space. So he ran a couple of health tech companies. He co-founded Chapter Medicare, which was the competitor to Fairsquare. So I, I know his company, uh, his <laughs> recent company pretty well. <clears throat> Since he's uh, decided to go the more political route, I think he's taken a, a little bit of a backseat with, with that company for, for now. What he's proposing, he's calling it Vivek's Kitchen Cabinet. You know how like when we're on DoorDash or Uber or anything like that, they always have that share with a friend, get five bucks. Yeah. He's bringing that model to political fundraising. Explain. So you could, if, if let's say you're a individual that supports him, you would get, you would sign up to basically become like an affiliate for every person that your code yields some, some kind of donation, you'll get a 10% kickback from that. Additionally, based on the ranking systems, right? Like how many referrers you get, things like that, you'll yeah. hit different awards and incentives such as personalized donation pages, exclusive campaign swag, calls with Vivek himself, invites to different special events. So it's like all these things that for the most part you wouldn't think would be involved with a campaign. He's bringing it to to that scene. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? It's it's creative. I think uh looking at it it's it's a good way to track oh yeah who's really gonna follow i think in campaign i'm not sure i'm just gonna speak out but how do you how do people really monitor campaign oh who you're voting for who you're supporting so i think that would be a nice little trick to figure out okay i have the x amount of supporters and you have like kind of a live live data set versus cold calling saying are you supporting x <laughs> i love the innovation side of it I love the creativity, but I just, I still, I'm like baffled. So how is it maximizing going to work? Is it kickstarting just the support of it? Or is there like a regular type of Kickstarter where it's traditionally like a tier, you know what I mean? You put X amount of donation on there. So have you figured that out? Is it just, is it just tracking like the affiliates or is it, I'm from donating X, X amount of money to the campaign. What is it going to come out of? What's the output for me as an individual for me donating to the campaign? Yeah, no, that's... Because when you say Kickstarter, when I, I heard about that. Yeah, when you're thinking of Kickstarter, and I just texted you the actual link too, so you can look at it while I'm talking. When you're thinking of a Kickstarter, there's different levels for the amount of money that you're pledging for that product. In this case, he's the product, right? You're supporting him in his primary, in order to become a Republican candidate for actual consideration. What all of these primary candidates are really doing right now is there's different threshold markers that they need to hit in order to actually become a primary candidate. Some of them are definitive number of contributors or supporters or things like that. So there's all these different criteria that when we'll see the primary Republican candidates, right? This is why they'll have I don't know, 15, 20 different people battling it out to become the the top candidate against the Democratic incumbent or uh, candidate. The thing that I love about this is something that you had briefly touched on, which is the tracking aspect. I'm not a campaign manager in any way, so I could be totally off here. But creating unique links for different individuals that are basically your advocates, that helps identify your true fans. And you can now really quantify who those individuals are that might not have been someone that you personally know. And you can now nurture that relationship. You can get that relationship going in a way that you can, you know, inspire different behavior to help you on your campaign. I think if you think of this entire model, apply it to Obama back when Obama was running. Would you say it's going to be successful? Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit is the vehicle or the product that's being supported. Just like the we've product seen a is ton. a person. Yes. Exactly. This is just another channel to help create the system. 
just like we see on Kickstarter, a ton of them die there and we've never even heard of them, but there's a few of them that were that very, very come successful. Out. I'm just reading up on it. Let's see. What's also interesting, I just, granted, it's for Silicon Valley and a, I'm not sure his political side, but it's it's on the tech aspect, you kind of feel like they're going to lean towards blue. It's just funny how I was like, oh, it's a Republican, which I have no issues with a Democrat. I'm just analyzing that aspect of that. For a techie, it's normally leaning towards blue, if I'm correct. You know what I mean? I know nothing about Vivek's platform, but seeing this uh, is a total yeah, it's, opposite it's, to some old dude who's running for president that doesn't know anything about technology. We all know that someone's ghostwriting his Twitters and all of that kind of stuff. This is interesting in the way of it's like willing to challenge new. the status quo. Yeah, it is new and it's it's intriguing me. Just from the website itself is very 3.0ish. Yeah, it's modern. Yeah, it let me now I'm curious. And again, this is not backing any candidate. I just thought no, that it's this just it's vehicle, just a new it's amazing. No, I I I'm just getting I'm getting nerdy on the tracking side. Okay. I just think I just think at the moment when we just hear the broadcasters saying, Oh, they might be gaining ground, losing ground, you don't really know what that really means and how they're even silly statistically gaining that number. Is it from a consensus where you just kind of answer from a phone? Or is it but here it's oh, I have a data where this is the popular spot and it also helps the party, the campaign itself saying, oh, we have a lot of people supporting and let's divert somewhere else. We know where my large group is. That's easily to, that's an easier way to funnel new sources and things like that. But where I have to actually put in hands in the dirt and actually go out in campaign, it kind of tells me, oh, this is the weaker state where I need to actually go into. So it actually helps more in a strategic standpoint, just having these, having a small metric of just a binary yes or no. And another piece to this, it's a little bit not transparent on what you need to do to qualify for the special events and things like that. But the fact that that's an option. Yeah. If this was Obama's phase, I would be like, yo, what do I got to do? I think I can think I can swing something and then go to some, you know, fancy event that I could put on a tux for the first time ever. Imagine if Bernie Sanders did this like back in eight years ago. Remember he was, he was just going small, but if he did a Kickstarter techie type of stuff, that would have been that would have been an interesting Kickstarter for millennials going from back going from then till oh wow we can really see what's going on and then blow it up. That's pretty interesting. When we're looking at some of the more recent candidates, there's always an inflection point sometimes on the technical side that helps propel them forward from a popularity standpoint. Obama was like known for being one of the first to really really utilize social media. Before Obama, mm -hmm. social media was not part of the the playbook oh he gathered crowds and like, now it's a now it's a go-to for everybody love. right so it's it that you don't stand out anymore this might be just enough different where other candidates might see it might be afraid to try it because it may not it's be out allowed of their it might be out of the comfort zone just going on i'm just looking at oh my goodness the ages of the candidates right now it's on npr so on average, they're about in their 50s. Vivek is the only one under 40. Yeah, he's, he's younger, low, bringing something yeah. new to the table. The second youngest is 44. So it's just that difference of speaking to that generation of the younger ones. He has a very more, he's more in tuned to it, which is a leverage for him. But we'll see how. Just in a political space, everything likes to keep it old school. So we'll see how it goes. We'll leave that one kind of open-ended. Anyone that's listening, feel free to leave your comments in the below about what you think with this approach. Is it too innovative? Is it shouldn't be something allowed where you're incentivizing people who are helping you raise money to, to have a kickback of some sort? What do you think? It's a great idea. It's uh, the innovation that some people are looking for when it comes to the candidacy. Yeah, let us know.